In this lecture, we'll talk about current bidirectional switches. So here is a uh, realization, one way to realize a current bidirectional switch. So this is a single pole, single throw switch that is actually a transistor connected with an, what we call an anti-parallel diode. The combination of the two is able to conduct current in either direction. So if we have our I of T switch current is positive, it can flow through the transistor. And if it's negative, it can flow through the diode. And of course, we could use a bipolar transistor here, or we could use a MOSFET or IGBT or other single quadrant switch. So the combination can conduct current in either direction. Uh, however, it can only block voltage in one direction. So when we want the switch to be off, if it blocks a voltage that is positive, so plus to minus in this direction, both devices can be off. But if we reverse the direction of the voltage, you can see that the diode will turn on and short out the voltage source. So this uh, combination is capable only of blocking one polarity of voltage, and so it's what we call a two-quadrant switch that is current bidirectional. <clears throat> okay, so formally, um, here is the single quadrant switch with the voltage and current directions defined. The combination of uh, transistor and diode have this composite IV characteristic, and as far as the plane of off-state voltage versus on-state current is concerned, we can operate anywhere in the first quadrant or the fourth quadrant. Uh, and of course, also, if we want to build a current bidirectional switch that operates in only the second and third quadrants, all we have to do is connect the, our transistor and diode up backwards, just define things going in the opposite direction, and we'll get the second and third quadrant. Uh, the MOSFET, I mentioned in the last lecture, is in fact a current bidirectional switch. So the MOSFET channel itself can conduct current in either direction. And in addition, it has this built-in body diode that can conduct negative current. And so the MOSFET by itself can be a, a current bidirectional two-quadrant switch. I also mentioned that the body diode of practical MOSFETs may not be a very good diode. Um, so if we have a slow body diode, we might not want to, to let it conduct and have to switch it off um, because of its slow switching time. So what one can do if you really have to is to put an external diode in series with a MOSFET that only lets current flow in the positive direction and then put an external anti-parallel diode to, um, to get a current bidirectional switch. We generally don't like to have to do this and we look if we're in that situation we really have two uh, other choices. One is to buy a MOSFET that has a very fast and good body diode, and especially at low voltages this is a, a good solution. Uh, or at high voltages the other option that we have is to uh, use a different kind of device such as an IGBT, and uh, nowadays you can uh, get good IGBTs that are co-packaged with fast uh, anti-parallel diodes built in. Here's an example of a um, two-quadrant switch application. So this is a simple inverter. We have split DC input voltage. So there's, we have a plus VG coming into our converter here. This is ground or zero volts, and we have minus VG there. And net, this is a DC input to the converter. Uh, and then we have a load, and we want to produce AC across this load and this node here is connected to this ground. So um, <clears throat> each of these is a two-quadrant current bidirectional switch. Um, if we succeed in producing an AC output, then the current in our load is AC and can go either direction. And that will coincide with the inductor current. So our inductor current can go either direction as well. <clears throat> That means that our switches, when they're on and conduct the inductor current, must be able to conduct either polarity of current. So they have to conduct the AC output current. 
On the other hand, the switches block the DC input voltage. So for example, if the uh, top switch is on and the bottom switch is off, then this node gets pulled up to plus VG and the voltage across the lower switch will be plus VG minus minus VG or 2 VG. But it's DC. And since our DC input voltage doesn't change polarity, we only have to block positive voltages with this switch. So a current bidirectional two quadrant switch will work. And in fact, current bidirectional two quadrant switches are commonly used in uh, uh, inverter applications. <clears throat> um, let's work out exactly how this converter works. So let's sketch the voltage at the switch node. So when the upper switch is turned on, Q1 is on, then uh, this node gets pulled up to plus VG. And we leave it on for some duty cycle or some first interval length. Then we switch the upper device devices off, turn the lower devices on, and that pulls this node down to here, which is minus VG. And um, we'll leave them in the lower position for the remainder of the switching period for D prime TS. And then we repeat. They're supposed to be straight vertical lines. Okay, so the average value of this waveform, or DC component, um, or at least the low frequency component, is equal to um, D times the voltage during the first interval, plus D prime times the voltage during the second interval. And you can work that out then. It's equal to VG times D minus D prime. D prime is 1 minus D, so we can also write this as VG times uh, 2D minus 1, which is what's shown here. <coughs> so this, uh, this low frequency component of this uh, waveform gets filtered out by the LC filter, and that's what's applied across our, our output load. Here's a plot of that function. You can see if d is a half, the function goes to zero. So we have zero net output voltage at duty cycle of a half. And if you increase the duty cycle above a half, we get positive voltage. And when we decrease the duty cycle below a half, we get negative voltage. And the overall conversion ratio function looks like this. So what you can do is you can vary the duty cycle about a half say, vary it sinusoidally like this. Okay, and if you do that, what happens to the output voltage is that the output voltage will vary sinusoidally about zero. So if you plug this function into here, uh, you can find that the output voltage is sinusoidal. So we vary the duty cycle sinusoidally. If we wanted to make, say, a 60 hertz output, we could make this, um, this modulation frequency of the duty cycle be 60 hertz, and we would get a 60 hertz AC output. Uh, the inductor current, you know, which is the load current, will also, be, uh, will also vary sinusoidally in the same way. So again, it's positive or negative, depending on which part of the sine wave we're on. And so we need current bidirectional switches. Here's a three-phase version of the same circuit. Uh, each of the three phases here is one of those circuits we just talked about. So it has our current bidirectional switches and an inductor driving one phase of the three-phase output. So here's a three-phase AC load. So we vary each of these phases, or vary their duty cycles sinusoidally, um, in a three-phase manner, so they're 120 and 240 degrees shifted in phase to get a three-phase AC output. And with this, we can get, um, you know, by varying all three phases in this way, get, you know, generate a three-phase AC and drive an AC load, such as, say, a motor, an AC motor, or even build an inverter to, to connect to the uh, utility here.
So again, the switches have to block the DC input voltage and they have to conduct the AC output current. So uh, this is fundamentally a two quadrant current bidirectional application. Here's a DC DC application of the same thing. This is basically a buck converter where our input voltage here, VG, is uh, some bus voltage. And one example is a spacecraft power bus. Um, and in this case, the load resistor is replaced with a battery. And there may be a filler capacitor here or not. Um, but this is basically a buck converter, except that what we were calling the resistive load before now is a battery that can both store energy or supply energy. So when we charge the battery, we have power going this way. So it comes out of the, the source. We, this actually works like a buck converter. And if you just draw transistor Q1 and diode D2 here and ignore the other two devices, you would recognize this as a buck converter that we've already talked about. Um, in this case, you don't have to turn Q2 on. But in fact, it doesn't hurt to turn Q2 on anytime Q1 is off. So we can actually drive Q2 with a complement of the gate of the base drive of Q1. <clears throat> if we want to supply energy out of the battery back to the bus, we reverse the direction of current. And in that case, Q2 and D1 are the ones that conduct. And again, we can turn on Q1 whenever Q2 is off and just continue to drive Q1 with a complement of the Q2 drive signal. Um, together, operated together, we simply have current bidirectional switches that can conduct current in either direction, depending on whether we're charging or discharging the battery. This is one circuit that is popular on space, some spacecraft. They have, uh, say, DC power supplied by solar panels, but when the spacecraft is eclipsed, uh, say in Earth orbit, it's eclipsed by the Earth and we don't have sun, then we need to supply uh, power to the spacecraft from the batteries, and so we need to both charge and discharge the batteries. So we can build current bidirectional switches basically as a parallel combination of a transistor and a diode. We call it an anti-parallel diode. This is basically taking two single quadrant switches and putting them in parallel so that they can conduct current in either direction.